What's up everybody, it's your boy Wes Grant, you're watching Sub Urban Nerd, this channel where I got my nerd views on today's nerd news. Well, it's Monday, and y'all that watch the show on a regular know that, what that means. <laughs> it's box office time, that's the first thing we're going to talk about, because you know me, I love me some movies. So, first on the box office in first place, we've got Coco, with uh, making about $26.1 million, right? But in its second week, it's, uh, I guess, altogether, domestically, it's made $108.7 million. And to, 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 to make it understandable how good that's doing, Tangled, it beat Tangled and uh, Moana for the second week, what they made. So this thing's on track to make a good amount of money for the studios because I'm hearing a lot of good things about Coco and at first I wasn't too sure about it because I don't didn't I didn't know how the kids would take it uh, as far as like it being about death or whatever but I'm hearing a lot of good things I'm hearing it's one of those Pixar movies that's gonna have you crying by the end of it so good on Coco and good on for Disney Pixar for making those movies that we all just can't help crying through just like that last scene in uh, Toy Story 3 where they're holding hands man like I, I'm a man man but a little bit of water got in these eyes but next, um, in second place, we have, you know, Justice League. They've made, uh, it made $16.5 million. Domestically, it's made $197 million, which I think the estimated, um, what they spent on it was like two fifty. dollars But this isn't counting worldwide. So domestically, it's $197. So it's on, it's on route to beat its score. But except from what I'm hearing, definitely not going to make that billion dollar mark that they were hoping that the Justice League movie would make. Uh, I don't even think it's going to catch up to what Thor Ragnarok made, because Thor Ragnarok is still up in the top five. Um, so uh, Justice League, I did like it. Um, I did uh, watch a review. I did make a review about it. I did a long one and a quick one. So uh, this one is for the quick one, and uh, I wait a little bit longer. This one is for the long one. So we're, um, next in third place, we've got Wonder, which I'm hearing a lot of good things about this movie, but I haven't seen it myself. Uh, it made $12.5 million domestically. It made $88 million, or $68 million. It's, I believe, $68 million, but um, uh, I don't know. I heard about good things about it, but hey, check it out if you ever want to see something. Uh, maybe a trailer. Maybe I'll put the trailer in the description down below. But um, next in fourth place, you know what we got? We got Thor. Thor, like I said, I, it, it should be... Nominated for Best Comedy of the Year because that's how funny this movie is. Uh, Thor, uh, you know, um, the Hulk, you got Valkyrie, you got Loki, all these guys together, th like, they just work so good together. And the movie just, it looked like they had a lot of fun making it, and the movie's a lot of fun to watch. So that movie made $9.7 million, which, like I said, even though it might seem low, this movie's been out for a while, and it's definitely made that money. So I don't know how much exactly that's made domestically, but it's, it's up there. Um, then in fifth place we've got Daddy's Home Two. Um, I heard a little bit, I heard like mixed reviews on that thing. I personally still kind of want to watch it, but I don't think I'm gonna pay to see it at theaters. I'll wait till you know it comes on TV or something like that, or maybe I'll watch it on my Fire Stick. Who knows? But um, it made seven point five million dollars, which I mean, in, I forget it's like maybe in this third or fourth week now. So that's pretty good, decent. It's still at least in the top five, so that's you got to give them a hand for that. But that's pretty much the, um, the box office report for the weekend. Um, every Monday I try and do that, so you guys know kind of what movies you should have watched. Because uh, on Fridays, I usually, or Thursday or Friday, I usually tell the movies that are in theaters and what you maybe should be watching. Um, first topic on the Nerd Rundown, Margot Robbie. Margot Robbie says she's working on three. Not one, not two. But three Harley Quinn movies, see, see, and there's, they're all spinoffs. Um, but I, I don't understand. Uh, she says three, but it's like, does she even know which one's actually gonna come out, if any? Like, because there's there's a lot of talks of the Joker or Harley Quinn movie. There's a uh, the Gotham City Sirens. There's I don't know. They're I guess they're talking about one of her own. In fact, they uh. This is all from an interview on a, uh, from MTV that Margot Robbie had with them. But from what I'm hearing, there, this is also supposed to be an animated series that Margot Robbie might be voicing. So I don't know if that's going to actually count as the third movie. Or third... Actually, it's, actually, it's, it's a TV series. Or it's, it's a series. It's not it's like an animated series. It's not even 
uh, just a movie, so I think it's going to be multiple episodes. I believe it's 23 or 26 episodes, which, hey, I think it could be fun, you know what I'm saying, as far as cartoon, because uh, the Harley Quinn comics, they're out there. They're, they're so, like, there's one where she had the Green Lantern ring, there's one where she's working with a uh, Power Girl, and they go to another dimension, and then they kill, like, you know, it's just crazy. Harley Quinn, it's definitely a fun comic, and if they adapt that sort of thing with the animated series, I can definitely see that going real well. And then that got actually lasting for them. And then Margot Robbie voicing that. Just get that money, son. Just I mean, <laughs> check or whatever. You know, just keep getting that money because that's that's how you do it. With voice actors don't sleep on that because voice acting, like if you you're consistent, you get with some things and they love you. You're gonna keep getting that money and getting that check. Look at the people from The Simpsons, man. Think about how much money they're making for those voices. But then again, they do make like each person does like say six voices from the show. But still, get that money. Um. Next, uh, I'm going to talk about, actually, David Ayers. He says he wished he had made the Joker the main villain and uh, in his Suicide Squad movie. And, um, duh, like, we all was wondering why he didn't do that. Because it didn't make sense, like, the Enchantress. First of all, Enchantress was part of the team. All of a sudden, she's the bad guy, and then she's doing a little dance that no one knew what that... Like, she looked like she was going in a seizure or something like that. It just... Uh, uh, Tara Delavid or Cara, Cara Delavid or whatever, beautiful girl. But as far as her acting in that movie, it, it was atrocious. But um, yeah, everybody is wondering why he didn't do that. Uh, everyone like the Joker would have been like. There's an animated series called Attack, um, Assault on Arkham, which I'll definitely put the uh, description down below or link to the description for the trailer of this because this thing, it was, it, it actually made it seem like the Joker is a threat. So. These people teaming up together to fight or to take on the Joker, it's it's definitely something that could have been feasible. But them all together taking on this, like, Enchantress that's, like, world-destroying kind of thing, it just didn't, make, it, it just didn't work, you know what I'm saying? So it would have it would have made it more grounded and more real. Like, And then you would have saw more conflict with Harley Quinn. Like, they, they missed a big opportunity to make this not just a explosion, explosion, special effects, that, that, you know, like, they made it like a music video. With some action in it. And they could have definitely delved them deeper. And Jared Leto, he was a great Joker. They just didn't give him, give him any time to shine. They, they they recorded a lot of things. And then he just cut it out. And I feel sorry for him because like he definitely he, he's, he delved into the role. But they just didn't show give him the time to show what he could do. Because people are always going to compare him to, you know, to the other Jokers. You know, like Heath Ledger. And um, that's like the Joker to beat. But you you know you can't beat it like he really went into the fact that to the point where he died. But like I said, Jared Leto he did a great Joker. It's just uh, we all wish we saw more. And now you know David Ayers he's saying that yeah you guys are probably right. We should have probably did that you know. But I don't know maybe they'll do that for the Suicide Squad two movie if that actually happens because DC you don't know what's going on with them. They're saying this. They're saying that. Why is there why are they even talking about spin off Harley Quinn movies? We ain't even got the Justice League down right man. Like, they're just throwing darts at the wall and seeing which one sticks. And that isn't how you run a business, man. Look at Marvel. As much as I hate saying that, look at Marvel. They've got to sleep for the next 20 movies after Avengers 4. So why are you taking so... Why are you doing this craziness? They're more reaction. I told you. Stand your ground. Make a plan. Do what you got to do. Don't make a plan. Do what you're doing. Oh, that might not work. Do this. Wait, that might not work. How about do this? Do this. Like that. Because you know what? Until you actually have focus... You can't get shit done. So, sorry, I, every time I go on a rap, I try not to go on a rap, but it's just so hard when it comes to DC. But, um, going on to the next thing, we've got, uh, according to the rap, the report, uh, they reported, uh, David S. Goyer, the writer behind Dark Knight Trilogy and Man of Steel, is in talks to direct, uh, the Masters of the Universe to Sony after writing the most recent version of the script. Um, this movie, it's... It's been this thing has been in development for a while, sort of like the Crow movie. It's uh, it's gone through th three directors before this guy, um, and it's gone through three directors before David, and it's they have a slate a time frame of it coming out December eighteenth, two thousand nineteen. I I don't know how they plan on doing this when they don't even, they don't even really the directors you know or directors just writing a script now so how you planning on the time frame that's just gonna put it like more stress on him i mean granted it's 2019 you could get some stuff done but he-man 
probably going to be special effects heavy. Uh, turning a, a boy into like a He-Man, you know what I'm saying? Because all I got to say is... But, that being said, <laughs> they have the power. They should do it sort of like... I guess it could be Lord of the Rings-ish. But it's like I said, that's a lot of money. And He-Man, as much as we might love He-Man, it's 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 a, it's a franchise that not a lot of people really care about. They did have a um, great animated series that was out a, a good couple years ago that I that I liked it, you know? They, just like they had a um, uh, Thundercats um, reboot that I liked too on Cartoon Network, but for some reason it just never took off. It didn't. They didn't last that long. So as far as that goes... I'm, I want them to do a, a He-Man or a Masters of the Universe, like, like to, you know, not think about the Dolph Lundgren one, but they could make it work, but I don't know if it's actually going to happen. I don't know if it's going to move because it's one of those things that there keeps being a new director, keeps talking about it, but it just never seems to be moving or going anywhere. So we'll see if that ever goes anything or does that and goes anywhere. But like I said, if you guys, I'm definitely going to keep you guys tuned in. If there's any new news about that thing moving forward, because I want it to happen, just don't know if it's going to happen. Next, we've got uh, Disney. They still some. They still want some of that Fox's ass. Like you know what I'm saying. Like they're still in talks to actually try and buy Fox. There's their. Like I said, I think Disney is trying to acquire Fox for their properties because not just for the Fantastic Four and the X Men. That's all. And then they don't need them. Well. I wish they came with the Fantastic Four because, like, that needs some help because that's just not coming out good with Sony. Or, I mean, with, with Fox at all. They just can't get that right. But coming with the uh, Fantastic Four, you've got Galactus. You've got the, the, the Kree, the full Kree. I mean, full scroll. Um, and I think they could do a lot of good. Doctor Doom, the great villains that could be pulled into the MCU that I would love to see. But, hey, but what I'm saying is they they're, um, Disney is doing a streaming service. So... If you're gonna do a streaming service, and not just ha and not just be focused on your your Disney's movies, your Pixar movies, your Marvel movies, you want some more stuff. If you acquire Fox, bam, you've got a whole slate that you can have on your streaming service, sort of like Netflix. Netflix, they're trying to do their own products and stuff. Why? Because they know that the the, the stuff is getting taken off. Everybody's trying to do their streaming service, so Netflix is gonna lose a lot. That's why they put so much money into getting. Um, uh, more more properties and stuff like that. That's why we're paying a little bit more, like a dollar more or something like that, because they're spending their money to create content on themselves, not renting it, just create it themselves, and that costs money. So, Fox, don't want you really to sell it to Disney because it just seems a little bit more too much of a monopoly, whatever, but I understand why Disney's trying to do that because they want to build up their streaming service. That's what I really think. It's the streaming service. I don't think it's the Fox or Sony. I mean, the Fox, um, the X-Men, or the Fantastic Four. I really think it's just the properties that they want for the streaming service. All right. Um, that's pretty much it with that. Uh, next, you know, the stories that uh, they show. Actually, uh, actually, the video is getting a little bit long, so I'm going to cut it. I'll, I'll put it on tomorrow's, vi tomorrow's video. I'm sorry to tease you guys like that. But the last thing I actually want to talk about is a Batman Ninja trailer. I talked about it on Friday, and if you guys missed it, I'm going to put this description in the link below. And all you got to do, just, 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 just focus on this little thing right here. Right here. Right here. I know. I know it's <laughs> This is what I'm talking about. Samurai Batman. Samurai Joker. You guys wanna see a little bit? Let's zoom in a little more.
that's what I'm talking about. That's. I know, still going, right? <laughs> but that's what I'm talking about. That definitely look forward to it. You guys, check it out. I know you just saw it a little bit bad quality, but like I said, I'm putting the description down below. And you guys, you know what? Check everything out. Um, sorry, to, you know, messing with the video or whatever. But remember, tell your friends, like, share, uh, subscribe. Uh, check out uh, the last Nerd News video. Check out the playlist of the Nerd Views video. Check out the um, the review of, you know, Justice League. So remember, I'm Wes Grant. You've been watching Sub Urban Nerd. If you've just been nerdified, catch you guys tomorrow.